Hey, it's Vaughn here at your jazzdrumschool.com YouTube channel. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So in this lesson, I wanna share with you about my new studio. I built this thing in March of this year, uh, 2024, and it has really completely changed my drumming, my practice, um, my creation of videos, everything. It's been such a godsend. And I wanna share with you kinda of how I did it and show you actually pretty much how easy it is and how anybody can do it. So my goal really was to reduce the volume so that I didn't make my neighbors crazy anymore. I have really cool neighbors around me and they don't really complain about stuff, but I really wanted to be respectful of people's ears. And even though I know what I'm playing is a, isn't a bunch of gibberish, um, to the untrained ear, it probably just sounds like a lot of noise. So I wanted to kind of be respectful. I want to be a good neighbor. So I decided to kind of build this studio on my own. I did a lot of research online. Uh, first kind of seeing pricing out one, just buying one and you know assembling it myself uh, or having a company do it. Um, and you know, I'll tell you what, the cost was exorbitant. I mean, it just was, really out of reach for me. We're talking like, you know, $15,000 for, a, for a, a box to, to play drums in. And I, I just couldn't do it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not terrible with a skill saw and a drill, and I think I could probably do this myself. And so I started off to figure out how I was gonna make that happen. And after all was said and done, I spent about $1,500 on it, American, US, uh, which isn't too bad. And overall, I feel like I got about an 80% reduction in the volume. Now, let me, let me give you an A, B. So first of all, we're gonna start off with my iPhone and my Shure MV88 microphone, uh, iPhone mic, inside the studio. And you can hear how loud it is. Then I'm gonna take it and put it outside in the living room, and you can hear, hear how loud it is outside of the studio. All right, check it out. Well, I think I accomplished the goal. Can you hear the difference? It's a pretty big difference. And I really haven't had any complaints uh, from the neighbors. Of course, they really weren't complaining before, but I think if I would have been playing that loud uh, on a regular basis, I definitely would have started getting complaints. So, knock on wood, no complaints yet. Now. I just want to share with you really quick about this microphone that I use. I use it on all my gigs. You might have heard my YouTube shorts, see my shorts and heard the video quality there. I'm the audio quality in those videos. Uh, this mic is really awesome. Uh, I have another article about it, uh, and I'll put the link below. You can go check that out. Um, and I only promote stuff that I use all the time. 
and that I know works and has made my life better. If you've got an iPhone, I think this is the mic for you. And I believe they also have an Android version. So uh, anyway, this is the Shure MV88 and it has transformed my business. And I don't say that lightly. And it's really good quality. Right out of the box, it works great. And I've got, it's got an app that comes with it for the iPhone. Um, and I believe also has an app for the Android. And you can adjust the EQ and the compression and all kinds of things. And I just have a little bit of boost on the bass and a little bit of compression, just this tiny, tiny bit of compression. So anyway, I encourage you to check it out if you are looking for a way to record yourself playing on your gigs or your rehearsals, your practice or whatever, this is a great mic to do it. Now on to the construction of this box. I call it my jazz in the box. In Japan, they use a metric system. So all the plywood is cut in 180 millimeter, uh, 180 centimeter uh, lengths, right, in, in dimensions. So I decided rather than, you know, cutting it and making it some you know, using extra pieces of plywood and cutting them in half and extending the size, I decided just to keep it simple, make it a box. And it's worked really, really well. And I got the volume reduction that I wanted so that I can then record my videos and my, for this YouTube channel, for my YouTube channel, I can record my courses for Jazz Drum School. I can do my drum lab live streaming every month for my students at Jazz Drum School. Uh, you know, it just opened up the doors uh, for my online teaching, all kinds of stuff. It just really made things possible for me as a drummer to do what I need to do. In addition to practicing and preparing for gigs and all the normal things that I have to do, right, as a drummer. So now let me take you on a little tour of it. We'll start on the outside and then I'll bring you uh, back inside. So here's the view from the outside. This is the view that you saw earlier when I was doing the uh, volume check, okay? And this is the view from the door uh, in kind of the front of the unit. So this is where we enter the studio. So here we're gonna go into the studio. You can see this is the doors open, we're walking in, and you can see that my Pearl Midtown kit fits just really nice right in there. Now the larger kit might not fit as well. So, you know, I have a 16 inch kick and 10 inch rack tom, 13 inch floor tom, 14 inch snare. So but it works really great for me, these sizes, okay? And there's my, my video setup, and you can see the lighting I have. You know, it's nothing fancy, all right? And that's really kind of how it is. You can see the padding on the roof. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about kind of the design and how I put things together. And to close it, what I do is I have just these kind of hooks, right? That clasp and close the door shut. All right, and I've got a carpet on the door to absorb the sound. It's really not fancy, but it works. Now you can see I have these curtains that I put all around. I have black on the other sides and red on the back, okay? And they're sound absorbing cur uh, uh, curtains. They're really, really effective. And I bought all this stuff on Amazon. Now I wanna share with you some video and some pictures of when I was actually making the studio. So you can kind of get a feel for what's inside the walls. Like how did I make this thing and how is it so soundproof? And I will say that almost all of the supplies that I bought to build it, I got at just a, a home center basically uh, here in Japan. And it was just, you know, you're kind of talking basic stuff. We're not talking anything fancy, nothing specifically designed for acoustic treatment or soundproofing. It's all run of the mill products that you can buy at your home center. So just laying out some of the wood, it's not gonna be very big. It's 180 centimeters by 180 centimeters. It's gonna be basically a box, kind of a cube. This is the probably the most complicated part right here. I gotta to put together the, the, uh, the work stand, the sawhorse. So, uh, but anyway, it's gonna be all made out of wood and uh, I'll take you on a, on a tour step by step. I'll show you kind of what I'm doing. So I've cut the first pieces and I'm framing it now. It's 180 by 180 basically. So, you know, putting the pieces together, I gotta cut two of the pieces smaller. I could stagger them, but I just chose to do it this way. And um, just kind of framing, just kind of getting the idea. And then I'm gonna flip everything over, drill some holes and screw it together. 
As of right now, I'm deciding not to put a centerpiece in there uh, because I'm not trying to support anything. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make this like uh, super sturdy. What I'm trying to do is make it soundproof. So uh, I'm opting for a more lightweight because this is actually going to be portable. I'm going to put it all together. It's going to be modular and I'm going to be able to take it to wherever I live uh, as my own studio. So that's the idea behind this as well. So there's really, um, there's no point really in making it like soup, the walls incredibly sturdy. It's more important to make it soundproof. So the filler that I put inside is going to be uh, really important. And I'm still kind of trying to figure that out right now, but I'll let you know as I go. So I'm getting into a zone here. Uh, got the first one done. You can kind of see over there. Um, and what I'm doing is basically putting some framing down and then uh, putting the plywood on either side. And in the middle, I'm stuffing it with uh, rugs, believe it or not. It's, I've looks researched a lot of things. And I'll show you in a little bit what exactly it is I'm using. Um, and it's pretty awesome. And it's not so expensive. So anyway, here's the framing. And I'll show you when I get the plywood stuck on uh, on the bottom. And then I'll get out the rugs and I'll show you what those are too. All right. So here are the rugs that I use on the inside. These are fairly common in Japan. They're um, just a throw rug, basically. Uh, and I was hanging them on my walls in my studio before. So I put grommets in them to hang them on the walls. And, you know, they're pretty effective at soundproofing. But when the structure that you're trying to soundproof or the structure you're soundproofing in, um, the, the room I was in, uh, doesn't have very good construction, then it's not going to do that much good. So I'm repurposing them in for the inside of my walls. All right, so I've uh, put in the carpet and I just uh, kind of tacked it in with some screws. And uh, yeah, so it works really good so that it doesn't move around. Um, and now I'm ready to put on the next layer of plywood over the top. So you can see, all I've got here is plywood, two by fours, and carpet in between. This kind of, you know, it's kind of throw rugs they, they sell here in Japan, kind of thermal carpet in between, it kind of in, in the walls. I mean, that's the insulation. And it worked so good. Now, what I also did was I did, I took acoustic caulking, 
which is just kind of basically um, kind of rubbery caulking. When it, when it dries, it still feels kind of rubbery. So I just put that kind of caulking, the silicone caulking uh, in all the little crevices and, and, and uh, seams. Uh, putting it together. When I started off to make this thing, I was going to make it with a floor also. So the floor was going to be the same construction as the walls. But as I got into it and I started doing it, I realized how heavy it was going to be. This sucker is very heavy. So if you're going to do this, I encourage you to have somebody else to help you kind of put it together. Uh, you, some parts of it you can't do by yourself. You're going to need some help. So I had some help to kind of put put things together. Uh, but it really is very, very heavy. So instead what I did was I took more plywood. I put two layers of plywood together for the floor, rubber mat, puzzle mat, and then I put more carpet on top of that. And that seems to have really done a great job. Uh, and on the underneath everything, I have puzzle mat and I have carpet, more of that, that insulating carpet, that thermal carpet. It seems to have worked really, really well. So, you know, I think it doesn't have to be complicated. Again, we don't have to, we don't have to make that floor. If you want to make that floor and put it all together that way, go for it. You can do that. Uh, for me, I just realized that the, the, the weight, the load of this thing is already so heavy. I was kind of afraid for the floor in the house, so I, it's a wooden floor and I just didn't want to take any chances. So I opted not to do that and it turned out just fine. Now one thing I don't have in here that I could get but I haven't done yet is I don't have air conditioning. And if you go back and you take a look at that video in the very beginning, you see right there where I have a little hole cut out. That's for basically the power, right, to a, a power cord to come in so that I can power everything in here. I opted not to get air conditioning yet uh, because there's only really, you know, a couple of months out of the year where it really just, it's just unbearable in here. Uh, so I, I just decided not to do it for now, but certainly I could bring in an AC, you know, I could get an AC unit and I could bring in cool air uh, through that hole that I had cut. Um, so that's another option. It's something I'm thinking about maybe for the future, but for the time being, doesn't seem to be an issue. Now, when I mounted my cameras, what was really convenient was being able to just kind of screw them onto the wall with brackets and just set it and forget it. It's, it's been great. Uh, there's no need to kind of take things down or move things around every time I'm done. It's just, it's set up. Every time I come in, I just, I'm ready to roll. The only one I have to set up regularly is just a foot camera. Uh, I have to I have to set this one up again whenever I come in. But other than that, everything else is ready to go, and which is really really nice. Uh, keeps it really simple. Um, you know, I just switch on all the switches and I'm live. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like the video if you like it. That helps to get around YouTube a lot easier. And drop a comment. Let me know if you've ever undertaken a project like this where you've built your own drum studio. We'd love to see it and love to learn about how you did that too. All right? Keep swinging, my friend.